is a key to be able to position ourselves to receiving what God has in store for us in the new year. And that is, we are taking our text from 2 Timothy chapter 2. 2 Timothy chapter 2, and we start reading from verse number 19. 2 Timothy chapter 2, reading from verse number 19. The Bible says, nevertheless, the solid foundation of God stands, having the seal. The Lord knows those who are his, and let everyone who names the name of Christ depart from iniquity. But in a great house, there is not only vessels of gold and silver, but also the, of wood and clay, some for honor, some for dishonor. Therefore, if anyone cleanses himself from the latter, he will be a vessel of honor, sanctified and useful for the master, prepared for every good work. May the Lord bless the reading and the hearing of his word in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, very quickly, in the passage of scripture that we read, one of the things I want you to look at is that number one is the unchanging standard of the Almighty God. The unchanging standard of the Almighty God. The Bible tells us in that verse number 19, it says, Nevertheless, the solid foundation of God stands. In other words, the things, the standard with which God uses to judge you and to judge me never changes. The standard that we use to bless you and to bless me never changes. It remains the same. It will continue to be the same. Number two, I want you to see the seal of God on changing standard. In other words, there is a seal. There is a particular stamp of approval that the Almighty God puts upon a standard that never changes. The seal of God's standard is how is that is that God knows those who are his own. In the church, you might look good and everybody might say he's a righteous person. The pastor is an anointed person. But only God knows the people that are serving him. Only God knows the person who is aligned with him. Those are the unchanging seal of the Almighty God. And then number three, we see the demand of God's unchanging standard. In other words, the standard that God has set, it has a demand that they placed upon you. The Bible says in that verse number 19, if you look at the second part, he said, let everyone who names the name of God depart from iniquity. That is the demand. If you are going to be accepted by the Almighty God, if you are going to enjoy the blessings of God, if we are going to move into the place where God favors us, there has to be a demand. The demand of God's standard must be applied to our lives. And that demand is that let everyone who names the name of Christ depart from from iniquity. And then finally, in that passage of scripture that we read, we see the condition with which God applies the honor and the upliftment of his people in the kingdom of God. We see the condition for uplifting. So you want to be promoted. You want to be elevated. You want to be able to see the goodness of the almighty God. The Lord has his own condition. Look at that verse number 21. The Bible tells us, sorry, verse number 20. The Bible says, in a great house, as we are here right now, there are so many people here. He said, in a great house, there are not only vessels of gold, there are vessels of silver, but also of wood and clay. Some to honor and some to dishonor. In other words, in a house, there is a particular plate that you use to be able to serve yourself, you eat a, that you used to eat. There are some that you used to serve your guests. For those of us who have dogs, there are plates that we used to serve our dogs. There for those of us who are, you know, who you know, there are, there, there are containers that we used to put trash in. There are containers that we used to be able to water the lawn. The Bible is saying that in the house of God, there are several kinds of containers. Okay? There are some containers that are gold used for decoration. Only brought out when people are, when high caliber people, people you respect. That is the only time you bring out that kind of container. He said that there's another container that you use anyhow. The one that you used to feed your dog. The one that you used to put trash in there. He said, in the house, there are not only vessels of gold and silver, but of clay and of wood and clay. He said, some you use for honor, some you use for dishonor. Now look at verse 21. He said, if anyone cleanses himself from the letter. In other words, if you take away filthiness of your body, if you take away the things that do not glorify the name of the Lord from your life, he said that he will become a vessel of honor. In other words, you when somebody who is important to you comes to visit, you don't take the plate that you used to feed your dog, Billy. You don't use that plate to give them food. If you do that, what do you think the visitor will do? You say, something is wrong with you. You have no respect for me. You are insulting me. You don't take the container that you used to carry trash to be able to present something for them. No, you don't do that. You bring out the very best of what you have. And so the Bible is saying, if anyone cleanses himself from the letter, he will become a vessel of honor, 
that is sanctified and useful for the master, prepared for every good work. In other words, Paul is saying to Timothy, his son and the Lord, he's saying that if the Lord, if you want to enjoy advancement, if you want to enjoy promotion, you want to enjoy prosperity in the kingdom of God as we enter into the new year. Certain things have to happen in our life. Number one, we must understand the unchanging standard of the Almighty God. Number two, Paul is saying there has to be a there has to be a subjection of ourselves to the specific demands of God on changing standard. But most importantly, Paul is saying that the advancement and promotion and prosperity in the kingdom of God is a function of specific specific condition. There are conditions that you must meet if you want to enjoy the blessings of God in the new year. And the question now becomes, what are these conditions? Based on the word of God that we read, there are two conditions that we see in that Second Timothy chapter 2. Okay, Look at verse number 19 again. He said, nevertheless, the solid foundation of God stands, having this seal. The Lord knows those who are his. And let everyone who names the name of Christ depart from iniquity. Verse number 20. But in a great house, there are not only vessels of gold and silver, but also of wood and clay, some for honor, some for dishonor. Therefore, if anyone cleanse himself from the latter, he will become a vessel of honor. Sanctified and useful for the master, prepared for every good work. From the passage of scripture that we're reading, the demand for the promotion, the demand for the advancement, the demand for which you are going to see, the, the, the thing that God demands for you to be able to enjoy his blessing in the new year, are uh, fall into two categories. Number one is for us to depart from iniquity. If we are going to enjoy the visitation of God, if we are going to enjoy the touch of heaven, if we are going to enjoy the promises of God as we enter into the new year, there has to be a departure from iniquity. The second condition that God is putting to us from the passage of scripture that we read is for us to cleanse ourselves from every evil. Look at verse number 21. He said, therefore, if anyone cleanses himself from the latter, he will become a vessel of honor. So these two conditions. These two demands of God's unchanging standard for the promotion and advancement is what I call the demand for holiness and righteousness. So as we enter into the new year, the Lord is basically telling us from the passage of scripture that if you are going to walk into the blessings of heaven, if we are going to enjoy what God has in store for us in the new year, there has to be a life of holiness and a life of righteousness. The Bible tells us in 1 Peter chapter 1, if you read from verse number 15, it tells us there, it said, but as he who has called you is holy, you also must be holy in all your conducts. Because it is written, be holy for I am holy. So you can see that the scripture is telling us very simple thing. That God himself is asking some very simple thing. Be holy if you are going to enjoy my visitation. Be holy if you are going to see promotion. Be holy if you are going to see God move on your behalf. And so as we enter into the new year, I want us to understand that holiness and righteousness is the foundation for the great destiny that God has prepared for us in the new year. Holiness and righteousness, proper alignment with the almighty God is what will guarantee the delivery of the promise of God in our individual life. Now for us to move any further, the first question is, what is this thing called holiness? Okay. And for you to understand holiness, you must understand what holiness is not. Okay? Holiness is not you, you know, holiness is not a pious look, you know, or a pious attitude. When you walk as if you don't know how to talk, they talk to you, they bless you, sir. But that is not holiness. So that is pretense. Okay? The people will talk like that in Wobu, uh, how do I call it in English? Their, their, their stomach is black. Their stomach is black. The people who behave like that, that they cannot talk, you know, Holiness is not when you wear body hair. You know this long skirt that these people will wear and they wear a neck in the sun. That is not holiness. Okay? <laughs> that is not holiness. Holiness is not pious look or attitude. Holiness is not mournful or conservative dressing. When your skirt is so big that you are walking like all these uh, mulam, you know all those people. Uh, that's not, <laughs> they are not wearing baka. That is not holiness. Uh? Holiness is not, uh, holiness is not conservative dressing. Holiness is not a gift. Please understand. Holiness is not a gift. 
But it is not a gift that you receive by laying of hands. Holiness is a decision that you make. All right? It's a conscious choice to say, I am going to separate myself unto the Almighty God. So holiness is not a gift, but it's a conscious personal choice. So what then is holiness? Holiness is being separated unto the Lord. Okay? Holiness is being separated unto the Lord. Holiness is a desire to please God at all times. A desire to please God. When it is convenient, when it is not convenient. It is a craving to live a, a godly life. Holiness is a, is a, you know, is a delightsome obedience to the command of scripture. Holiness is living by the dictate of what the Bible says. So if the Bible says go, you go. If the Bible says sit, you sit. If the Bible says thou shalt not do X, Y, you don't do X, Y. You don't argue with the scripture. That's what whole basic holiness is basic obedience to what the Bible says. And that's why the Bible was telling us when Mary was talking to those people when the wine was over, this is what she told them. He said, whatever he tells you to do, do it. In other words, holiness is basic obedience to the Almighty God. Now, for some of you might be wondering, this is New Year's Eve. We're supposed to be here to come and pray. Why are you telling us about holiness? Eh? Why are you talking about holiness? I'm telling you about holiness for a number of reasons. Number one, without holiness, you cannot command the spiritual. You cannot command the supernatural. In other words, you cannot pray and see answers to prayer. Because the Bible says that the prayer of a sinner is an abomination in the ears of the Almighty God. So please understand that. Without holiness, you cannot command the supernatural. The Bible tells us, you, everybody knows about this man called Elisha in the Bible. He had a servant called Gehazi. Elisha sent Gehazi with his staff. Ordinarily, the staff of Elisha was supposed to do what is supposed to, what Elisha wants it to do. But in the hands of Gehazi, the, that particular staff could not do anything. Elisha, eh, Gehazi had to return it back onto Elisha, and Elisha had to go himself. And the reason is because a Gehazi's heart was not with the Lord. Gehazi was the one who ran after Naaman to go and collect what the prophet refused. So please understand. Without holiness, we cannot command the supernatural. Number two, I'm telling you about holiness because without holiness, uh, we cannot flourish in hard times. And I bet you hard time is coming upon this nation. Hard, hard, hard time is coming upon the world. And without holiness, you'll find it very difficult for us to survive. The Bible tells us in Psalm 37, they say, the Lord knows the days of the uprights. And their inheritance shall be forever. They shall not be ashamed in evil times. And in the days of famine, they shall be satisfied. Only the people who obey the Lord will be satisfied in difficult times. I'm telling you. And that is one of the reasons why I'm telling you about this holiness business. I'm telling you about holiness because without holiness, we cannot have dominion over the works of the devil. It is not possible for us to have dominion and have power and be able to command the enemy to leave us alone when we are dwelling inside the house of the enemy. You cannot command the devil to leave you alone when you have the property of the enemy in your house. You can't. And that is why we are talking about it. Because without holiness, we cannot have dominion over darkness. Number four, without holiness, we are not able, we cannot be able to receive clear revelation from the Almighty God. And I tell you the secret of success in the life of anyone. And that secret is that God telling you the things that is about to come. When God opens your eyes to see the things that others are not seeing. When God gives you an insight into things that other people do not understand. And so when you begin to behave, people will think that you are a magician. But they don't know that you are receiving revelation from the Almighty God. And without holiness, the Lord Almighty will not be able to give us divine revelation. The Bible says that for the natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God. For they are foolishness to him, nor can they, neither can he know them. Because they are spiritually discerned. Only those who are in total obedience to the Almighty God can receive instruction from him that will move them forward. Number five. I'm telling you about holiness because without holiness, we cannot enjoy the protective covering of the Almighty God. The enemy will mess that individual up. The enemy will steal, will kill, and will destroy the individual who does not have, who does not live in total obedience to the Almighty God. That is why I am telling you that the Bible says, He that dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Only the people who are in obedience with God will enjoy that kind of a covering. Now, why am I telling you? Number six, I'm telling you this because without holiness, you have no guaranteed access 
to the presence of the Almighty God. In other words, when you are praying, you are just wasting your time. Because the Bible makes us to understand that prayer of a sinner abomination in his ears. He doesn't want it. God is angry with the sinner every day. And when you are not in obedience with him, when you are talking to him, you are wasting your time. And then finally, I am telling you about the road living a holy and righteous life because without holiness, you cannot see honor, you cannot see upliftment in the kingdom of God. God will not promote somebody who is in total disobedience with him. Okay? You as a person in your place of work, a person doesn't show up for work, he doesn't do a good job, he doesn't, he always insulting the supervisor. He's doing everything that is contrary to the things of, that are that moving forward. Do you see that kind, of, that kind of person being promoted? Never. They will never be promoted. They can complain from now to tomorrow, they will never be promoted. Why? Because every action that they are taking is contrary to what? To things that guarantee promotion. And when you are in total disobedience with the Almighty God, when you are living a life that is opposed to the Word of God, you cannot expect Him. To lift you up. That is why we're talking about it. And these are some of the reasons why I'm telling you about this in, you know, in a, in a, in, in a discourse of a service. In Proverbs 21, reading from verse number 16, the Bible said that a man who wanders from the way of understanding will rest in the assembly of the dead. A lot of believers in church are resting in the assembly of the dead because they refuse to understand. They have believed the lie. And that lie is that you can live anyhow. God will continue to bless you. God doesn't care what, how you do. He doesn't care how you look. He doesn't care what you do. You are going to be blessed. They have believed what is called cheap grace. And cheap grace will not give you the result you are looking for in the new year. Okay? So now that we have, you know, we have to now make a commitment to live a life that is glorifying the name of the Almighty God if we are going to move forward in the new year. Now, making that commitment for, you know, to live a holy life is what will guarantee the visitation of the Almighty God. Okay? And when you make that commitment, you begin to see, okay? You begin to see that you begin to have a clear revelation of what to do, where to go. The Bible said that the secret of the Lord is with him, is with those who fear him, and he will show them his covenant. You want to know the secret of the Almighty God as you enter into the new year? Fear the Lord. Walk with the Lord, align yourself with the Almighty God, and you will see His secret revealed unto you. When we make a commitment to serve the Almighty God in holiness and righteousness, you will find that that we begin to have access to the wisdom of God that will move our lives forward. Not only that, when we make a commitment to be able to serve the Lord and to obey Him, we will have access to our divine inheritance. The promises He has made to you, the promises He has made to me, becomes a reality. When you begin to obey the Lord. And then finally, when we begin to obey the Almighty God, you will find that that answers to prayer becomes a reality. Psalm 66 verse 18 tells us, If I regard iniquity in my heart, in other words, if I live a life of disobedience, if I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. Okay? But certainly, God has heard me. He has attended to the voice of my prayer. Why? Because I have repented of my sin and I've made it a duty to live a life that is pleasing unto him. So please understand, if we want to see answers to prayer as we move into the new year, we have to make a commitment to live a life that is blessed, that is, a, that is a, aligned with the Almighty God. Now seeing the benefits of living a holy life, the question is, how do you position yourself to make sure that your life is in obedience with the Almighty God. How do you do it? Genesis chapter 39, the one that we read for our Bible reading just now. In verse number 7, the Bible said, And it came to pass, after this thing, that his master's wife cast his longing eyes on Joseph, and said, Lie with me. And he refused and said to his master's wife, Look, my master does not know what is with me in the house. And he has committed all that he has into my hand. That there is no one greater in this house than I, nor has he kept back anything from me but you. Because you are his wife. Now, how, now then, can I, how then can I do this great wickedness and sin against God? So it was, as he spoke to Joseph day by day, that he did not heed her to lie with her or to be with her. The question again is, how do you position yourself to become a man or a woman who is holy and righteous before the Almighty God? Number one, you position yourself by recognizing the danger of sin in any life. The Bible says righteousness exalts a nation, but sin 
is a reproach on anyone. Sin will destroy anything that it touches, even our lives. The Bible said the wages of sin is what? Death. But the gift of God is eternal life. So please understand, for us to be able to position ourselves to live a life that is risen unto God, we have to recognize the danger of sin in our life. Joseph recognized it and he did not touch that particular woman. Number two, we boy to be able to live a life that is holy and pleasing to the Almighty God so that we can access the blessings that God has in store for us in the new year. We must position ourselves to live a life by making a conscious decision to avoid any appearance of sin. A conscious, a, a, a conscious decision to avoid anything that looks like sin. Because when you begin to, when you begin to keep yourself from those kind of things, you make sure that you see, it helps you to stay away from any kind of mistake that will lead you into sin. Number three, we position ourselves to live a life of holiness by making a determination to resist every kind of temptation. Bible makes us to understand Joseph was being pursued every day by this woman. And Joseph had made a determination never to go near her because of the danger of doing it and the consequence of doing it. But finally, number four, we position ourselves to live a life of holiness and life of righteousness by, you know, through faith and the power of the Holy Ghost. My friend, sin is good. Sin is sweet. Yeah? If you, you know, you know what it's called, OPP, other people's money. It's always good to spend other people's money, you know that. Eh? If you want to spend your own money, you will think twice, but spend other people's So sin is always very attractive. But for us to be able to resist sin, you cannot do it in your own power. How many times have you decided, I'm not going to do something that you have gone back and do the same thing again? Why? Because the flesh is weak. Only the Spirit of God is able to help. And when God said, be ye holy, that I, as I am holy, God is not asking you for something that you are not capable of doing. He's only asking you to do it in the power of his spirit. And that is why for us to live a holy life, you live it by faith and you live it in total dependence on the spirit of God. That's why the Bible says, whosoever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. When you trust God, that God can give you victory, then victory becomes ours. So these are some of the ways in which we can position ourselves to live a godly life as we enter into the new year so that we can access all that God has in store for us. In closing, I want us to go back to our text again. 2 Timothy chapter 2, reading from verse number 19. The Bible says, nevertheless, the solid foundation of God stands, having this seal. The Lord knows those who are his, and let everyone who names the name of Christ depart from iniquity. But in a great house, there is not only vessels of gold and silver, but also of wood and clay, some for honor and some for dishonor. If anyone therefore cleanses himself from the letter, he will become a vessel of honor, sanctified and useful for the master prepared for every good work. The question this evening before we begin to pray, the question this evening before we pray, begin to pray is, do, are we, do you want to be set apart for the use of the almighty God as we enter into the new year? Do you want to step into your divine destiny that the Lord Almighty has prepared for us in the new year? Do we want to be able to advance and be lifted up and receive the honor that only God can give? Do we want that in the new year? If the answer is yes, the Bible says, if anyone cleanses himself from the letter, he will become a vessel of honor. The question is, are we ready to cleanse ourselves? As we enter into the new year. Are we ready to position ourselves. To be able to enjoy all that God has in store for us. This will not happen overnight. We have to make a determination. That I will set myself apart. So that the Lord Almighty can visit with me. So this way, this evening. I want you to bow your head and begin to talk to the Almighty God. I want you to call upon the name of the Almighty God. Those things that stood in the way of my access to the blessings of heaven in 2023. Lord, as I cross over into the new year, I pray, Father, begin to take them out of my life in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Those things that did not allow me to walk with you the way I am supposed to walk with you. I pray, Lord, begin to take it out of my life today in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ.